Okay, first big car video back after Christmas, so I thought I'd share with you some of the presents I got. So first of all, I've got the obligatory Lego that's important. Um, I also got this, which apparently is me, although maybe it should have had the blue shirt and not a big hat and sunglasses, but anyway, it's a very nice thought from my daughter. And from my other daughter, I got this sign, which, uh, which does light up, uh, saying Mr. Big Car Influencer, because of course, She's that generation that, you know, apparently I'm an influencer. I'm not an influencer. But I noticed that it's in quotes. Uh, so apparently I'm an influencer, just like people say you're good at something. <laughs> so anyway, um, it sort of blows out the display a bit when I put it on. So I'm gonna turn it off for the rest of this video. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So I put out a poll to the community to ask what was the best value sports car, if you exclude the Mazda MX-5, which to be honest, would be my go-to choice. You came up with some really good suggestions, so I thought I'd go through each one, giving you their performance stats versus the price. So imagine you're given 40,000 pounds, that's about $50,000 to get a three-year lease on a sports car of your dreams, and anything left over, you could blow on whatever you like, a holiday or even another sports car. Which of the following would you get? This is the list of your best value sports cars. I've compiled this list in order of cost from most to least expensive. Rather than just go on the purchase price, I thought it would be better to go on the total cost of ownership over a certain period of time. And a good proxy for that is the total lease amount. So I've ordered the list based on the cost to lease each car for three years and for up to 30,000 miles. I've also limited the list to just two-door cars, more because if we're going to include four-door cars, the list will become very, very long with cars like the always fun Honda Civic Type R. Coming in at number 15 is the Porsche Cayman, costing a whopping £40,200 to lease over three years. Surprisingly, it wouldn't cost much more to buy it outright. The Cayman and its open top sister, the Boxster, have been around since 1996 as the entry-level car in the Porsche family. The latest generation, the 718, has been around since 2016 and shares its platform with the current 911. As the Cayman has a 0-60 time of just over 5 seconds, its 2.0-litre turbocharged engine seems fast enough, with a top speed of 171 miles an hour, although you can also buy a 4.0-litre engine that improves on the stats a little bit more. No matter which engine you buy though, it seems to be a better deal than the 911 itself that costs another £45,000. In my opinion, that's a lot more for something that's only a little bit better and a little bit faster. In 2017, Renault gave new life to the Alpine brand when they launched the A110, the successor to the original car from 1963. Like the Cayman, it's mid-engined, using a tiny 1.8 litre Renault engine, also seen on the Aspas of all things. It might be a small engine, but it produces 249 horsepower, and with a lightweight all-aluminium chassis, it gets to 60 faster than the Cayman, just four and a half seconds. In the UK, it's more expensive to buy than the Cayman, but it's a little less to lease. It's been quite a while since the A110 first launched, 2017, and it's still the only model in Alpine's lineup, and you can't buy it outside of Europe and Australia with global sales peaking at only 4,800 in 2019, it's not doing a great job recouping the massive Formula One marketing sponsorship investment. It's not certain what will happen to the next Alpine. It was to be a collaboration with Lotus, but that partnership dissolved in the middle of 2023. The Stingray is Chevrolet's entry-level Corvette. Like the Porsche and the Alpine, it's mid-engined rear-wheel drive, which helps the drivability through twisty bends. The Stingray is a lot cheaper to lease in the USA than the Porsche, coming in at $45,000 or £35,500. It's available in the UK, Europe, Australia, and even New Zealand. 
but it's not cheap to buy outright. £93,000 in the UK at least. That's £40,000 more than the cost of a Cayman, whereas in the USA both cars cost about the same price. But for that you get a car that's much faster. 60 miles an hour arrives in under 3 seconds and it tops out just shy of 200 miles an hour. Those amazing figures come courtesy of a 6.2 litre V8 engine, meaning the entry level Corvette really is a supercar on a budget and a strong contender for best value sports car if you're purchasing purely on performance. You also get a car that's got more history than any other car in this list. The original Corvette appeared in 1953 as an all-American rival to MG's Jaguars and Alfa Romeos that returning GIs were importing to the US at the end of the Second World War. It was a truly revolutionary car using a fiberglass body, but it was always scorned by Europeans for putting that big heavy engine up front. That changed with the current version that launched in 2020, and they're not laughing now. The Mercedes C-Class Coupe might not be seen as a sports car, but the entry-level car's 2.0-litre turbocharged 255 horsepower engine will get to 60 in under 6 seconds, and if you want to pay for an AMG version that will cost you more than a Porsche Cayman, you can reduce that time to 4.5 seconds. For your £34,000 lease cost you'll get the Mercedes badge and all that goes with it. The first C-Class two-door coupe appeared with the second generation car that launched in 1999, but the one we're considering is based on the 2015 fourth generation using a platform that's shared with many other models including the S-Class. The C-Class was updated in 2021 but not the coupe. The coupe is still available in the US for just less than $50,000, but it's already been replaced in the UK and Europe with a new CLE that's also replacing the E-Class coupe. As there's no firm price or lease cost on the CLE, I didn't include it in the list. Lexus have recently been trying to give their image a sporty makeover ever since they realised it was something that drew customers to their German rivals. Their two-door sports car is the RC or Radical Coupe that first appeared in 2014 and still hasn't been updated. It shares its platform with other front-engined cars such as the fourth generation Lexus GS, the current Lexus IS and even the Toyota Century. Those are all large four-door saloons, so it's no surprise that the RC isn't the hottest sports car in this lineup. In fact, it's more of a Grand Tourer, but it's a lot cheaper than the Mercedes to lease at £25,500. In the US you can buy one for $46,000, but in the UK you'd be paying £76,500 as Lexus only sell the more powerful RCF model. That's got a 5 litre V8 and 8 speed transmission that boosts the 0 to 60 time from a paltry 7.3 seconds on the entry level car to 4.5 seconds, but it's still a heavy car with that heavy chassis that limits its ability to deftly handle twisting bends. So, although it's number 11 on this list, on the fun scale, it's probably much lower. At number 10 is another German entry-level luxury sports car, the BMW Z4. The original version was the Z3 that burst on the scene driven by James Bond in the 1995 film Goldeneye. It became the Z4 for the next generation in 2002 and the current version launched in 2018. It's based on the CLAR platform that's a joint development with Toyota who use it for the Supra. But like Mercedes C-Class, BMW use it for pretty much their entire range. This means the Z4 is front-engined and rear-wheel drive. The entry-level model in the US costs $31,000 or £24,300 to lease and comes with a 3-litre engine, giving it similar performance to the 2-litre Cayman. The UK version makes do with a 2-litre engine that's a second slower to 60 miles an hour. At $53,600 to buy in the US and £45,000 in the UK, you get a sharp looking open top that will turn heads as you cruise past, and if you want more pep, there's always the M version. The latest Nissan Z car, now simply titled the Nissan Z, comes in at number 9. 
The Corvette was a 1950s reaction to British MG sports cars, and the first Z car was a reaction to 1960s British sports cars like the MGB GT, with the original model launching in 1969. There have been some incredible cars in the range, so the new car has big shoes to fill. The older models use the engine size and the name, so the last generation car was the 370Z that had a 3.7 litre engine. The new car has a smaller 3 litre engine, so rather than calling it the 300Z, which might seem like a bit of a downgrade, or might confuse customers with the 1980s 300ZX, Nissan has wisely called it just the Z. That smaller engine is more than up to the task though, producing more power than the previous car, 400 horsepower, and getting to 60 in under five seconds. This is the second newest car in our list, launching in 2022, although it uses the same platform from the previous car that's also shared by a long list of regular passenger cars from the Nissan product line. By saving development costs, it's available in the US for only $42,000, and is also available down under but it still hasn't made it to the UK or Europe. But given its pedigree, performance and price, it's a great all-rounder, and in my opinion, a strong contender for best value sports car. The Audi A5 is the cheapest luxury lease in this list, coming in at £21,700. Like many cars in this list, it uses a 2-litre turbocharged engine to produce an impressive 5.3 second 0-60 time, but you can of course get faster versions like the S5. The top of the line RS5 has a 0-60 time of only 3.7 seconds and a 174 mile an hour top speed, yet still costs less to lease than the Porsche Cayman. I would have included the Audi TT on the list, but that went the way of the Dodo when it was discontinued in November 2023. But the A5 is still a fine car, and a great deal. The entry-level model can be bought outright for £42,500. The first A5 appeared in 2007, and is the spiritual successor of the 1980s Audi Coupe that I've already done a video about. The current car is a second generation that launched in 2017. It's based on the Audi A4, and with a new generation about to appear, there are rumours the A5 Coupe will be dropped. So if you're looking for a car with the right badge and room for four, the A5 might be the car to buy sooner rather than later. So, you want a BMW Z4 with a Japanese twist for a little less? The current 5th generation Toyota Supra that launched in 2019 might just be the car you're looking for. As I mentioned, both the Z4 and the Supra are based on the same platform, and that entry-level Supra uses the same 2.0-litre BMW engine, giving similar performance. But getting the Toyota badge and styling saves you £3,400 over a three-year lease. It costs $8,000 less to purchase in the US, but good luck trying to find one for sale in the UK, even though they're on sale in Australia and on the continent at around the same price as the Z4. Where the Z3, Z4 launched in the 1990s, the Supra has history that goes back to 1978, when it launched as a competitor to its big Japanese rival, the Nissan Z car. That battle continues today where the Supra is cheaper to lease, but not to own. At number six is Ford's muscle car from the 1960s, the Mustang. It was the only regular passenger car Ford saved from its cull in 2018. Today, Ford's lineup is made up of crossovers, SUVs, and trucks. You can't blame Ford for making the shift though, those passenger cars weren't making any money, and like all for-profit companies, Ford needs to make sure it has more money coming in than it spends. But the fact it's Ford's only passenger car means it doesn't share its platform with any other vehicle, which means any future version will cost a lot more to produce. That must surely put its future in doubt. Thankfully, those thoughts can be delayed for a while at least. The latest version of the venerable Mustang, the seventh generation, launched in May 2023, making it the newest model in our list. Despite a 0-60 time, around the same as the Nissan Z, it's over $11,000 less in the US. 
That lower price means a lease is also considerably less at just over $20,000 or £15,900. That's a lot less than half the price of a Porsche Cayman and it can beat it in a drag race. Like the Alpine, it uses a relatively small engine to produce this amount of power, a 2.3 litre EcoBoost with 315 horsepower that takes the Mustang to 164 miles an hour. The Mustang is available on the continent and was on sale in the UK, but British buyers can't get hold of one right now, presumably because of lingering supply chain problems. It'll also be coming to Australian shores sometime in 2024. Just ahead of the Mustang is its rival from General Motors, the Chevrolet Camaro. It sneaks past the Mustang both in retail costs and price to lease. Like the Mustang, the base model has a relatively small 2.0-litre engine, producing less power than the Mustang, 275 horsepower, which means it has a slower 0-60 time of 5.5 seconds. So maybe it's worth paying a little extra for the Mustang. Like the Toyota Supra and the Nissan Z car, the Mustang and the Camaro Pony cars have been duking it out since they launched, although there was a time between 2002 and 2009 when the Camaro wasn't produced. The current car was introduced in 2015 and shares its platform with the Cadillac ATS and CTS. It's not available in the UK or Europe. It was available in Australia from 2018, but slow sales meant imports ended in 2020. The Camaro ended production in December 2023, so get the last ones while you can. GM has said this is not the end of the Camaro story. Well, let's hope so. Toyota worked with BMW to produce the Supra, and they worked with Subaru to produce the Toyota 86. Toyota was inspired to create the car after the 1980s Toyota Corolla AE86. But in a way, this car replaced the third generation Toyota MR2, which was a Mazda MX-5 wannabe that failed. The new coupe has done a better job at competing with Mazda's open top, costing around the same price in the US. The 86 has sold modestly well around the world since it launched in 2012, and a new generation launched in 2021. Where the first version used Subaru's 2.0-litre boxer engine, the new model's engine grows to 2.4-litres, producing 230 horsepower and getting to 60 in just over 6 seconds, which is faster than the MX-5. Yes, it's not the fastest in this lineup by a long way, but given the price, it's nothing to be sniffed at. To buy it outright, you're looking at £32,500, and that means it's relatively inexpensive to lease one as well at just over £15,400. You would think the Caterham 7 has been around longer than the Corvette. It's one of those things that has just been there and always will be, like post boxes or Heinz ketchup. But the Caterham 7 first appeared in 1972, born out of the Lotus 7 that was unveiled in 1957, four years after the Corvette. If you don't mind getting a little wet or cold, it's a fast, cheap barrel of fun, either pre-built or in kit form. I don't have a lease value for the Caterham, after all it's not exactly a car that's readily available to lease but I've bought this in at number three on its price to purchase, just shy of £30,000, which beats out the Toyota 86. Where some cars in this list are rocking large V8 engines, the entry-level Caterham 7 has by far the smallest engine in this lineup, an 84 horsepower 660cc engine from Suzuki that they also use in their tiny Alto. But the Caterham 7 is such a lightweight car, this propels it to 60 in under 7 seconds, and you can configure it with a 310 horsepower 2 litre Ford engine if you want to go grey prematurely and lose your hair. How do you think I ended up like this? The Caterham 7 hasn't changed much since Colin Chapman started selling it in 1957. Unlike post boxes and Heinz ketchup, it'll likely be here in another 67 years. As I said at the start of the video, the MX-5 is, in my opinion, the best value sports car, but it doesn't make the top spot. 
the £26,000, it's a great deal and you can lease one in the US for three years for only $17,500 or £13,800, a fraction of the price of the Porsche Cayman and it would leave you enough left over from that £40,000 you got at the start of the video to allow you and your family to go on a two-month cruise. It's the slowest car on the list with a one and a half litre engine delivering a 0 to 60 time of 8.3 seconds. But as I said in my video about the history of the MX-5, having fun in a sports car is more than just acceleration and top speed. It's the fun of throwing a car through the bends and the MX-5 has been delighting drivers since its launch in 1989. The fourth generation launched in 2014 and for the first time offered a version with an electrically targa style foldable hardtop. It spawned another car built on the same platform, the Fiat 124 Spider, that unfortunately bit the dust in 2020. There's nothing quite like the MX-5 and it keeps devotees coming back again and again. But will there be a fifth generation car? Before we get to the top car on the best value sports car list, I thought I'd give some honourable mentions. The Lotus Emira is the last car Lotus will produce with an internal combustion engine and also the cheapest in their range. That's not saying much though as it costs £81,500. Lotus certainly don't provide cheap thrills anymore, we're a long way from the Lotus 7. I'm sure it's a lot of fun but I ruled it out of the list here due to cost. If cost wasn't an issue, I'd be including Bugattis in the list. I could also have mentioned some cars that cost a little bit more than the Porsche Cayman, like the Jaguar F-Type that would set you back £46,000 to lease. Opel have announced a new version of the Manta that will launch in 2025, as an EV of course. And finally, the Chinese company SAIC, who owns the MG brand, have announced a sports car concept, the Cyberster. With a name like that, it sounds like they're trying to ride the hype surrounding the Cybertruck. This new EV is supposed to be coming soon with almost final production cars shown in 2023. The Subaru BRZ was created with Toyota and is almost identical to the Toyota 86, but the Subaru gets the top spot because it's better value. Where you can lease the Toyota for £15,400, the Subaru comes in £2,200 less, meaning it just beats out the Mazda MX-5 to the top spot, although it'll cost £1,700 more to buy one new, so if you're the type of person who doesn't lease, the MX-5 is the winner. It's also more expensive to buy outright than the Toyota 86 and is available in far fewer parts of the world. As you can see from the MG Cyberstir and the Opel Manta, the future of sports cars will very likely be electric. And that's no bad thing. I own a Tesla Model 3 and it's a lot of fun. After making the Mazda MX-5 video and remembering all the fun I had test driving one in the 1990s, I thought I'd give the latest model a go. I came away disappointed. It might have the right weight balance, but the weight of the engine is still relatively high and my Tesla, even though it's a bigger and heavier car, outperforms it and is much more fun on a twisty road. As I said at the start, the best value sports car is really in the eye of the beholder and there isn't a bad car in this list. And if you're in the market for a used car, there are some amazing cars that are now no longer being produced. Every single car in this list has an internal combustion engine, but as can be seen from my honourable mentions, the next decade will bring new EV sports cars with even better handling and power. The next decade is going to be a lot of fun. If you wanted to know the history of the Mazda MX-5, there's a video on the right. If you want to see the history of Nissan Z cars, there's also a link to that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.